Contrary to what many believe with me, the internet Sebastian Vettel fan, no, I don't have beef with Daniel Kvyat. As a matter of fact, I think the story of his career so far has been incredibly compelling. Kvyat was a stud talent, strong in Formula Renault 2.0 the moment he walked into the series. A very good guest driver for Carlin in Formula 3, but his first big break was winning the GP3 Championship as a 19-year-old class rookie, and then getting fast-tracked into Formula 1 over fan favourite Antonio Felix da Costa, a decision that many people have questioned for breaking the conventional trend of motorsport, skipping GP2 in a very similar move to what we saw Jack Miller do in MotoGP just a year later. His rookie season was hampered by an unreliable Toro Rosso team and a very strong teammate in John Eric Verne, but he had standout moments, like breaking Sebastian Vettel's record of F1's youngest point scorer in his very first race, as well as qualifying fifth at his home Grand Prix in Sochi. Vettel leaves Red Bull, and Kvyat gets the call over John Eric Verne to replace him at Red Bull, another questionable employment decision that mystified the F1 audience. Christian Horner claiming he felt Danil had more potential than Verne, a man who had pretty much matched Daniel Ricciardo stride for stride in their two years together at Toro Rosso. We were all shocked. Last season, Kvyat was one of the breakout stars of the year, including a career-high second place in Hungary and two other top five finishes in a season where Red Bull was at its worst since 2008. And as much as D Daniel Ricciardo was on the unluckier side of things, Kvyat did outscore the guy many claim was the 2014 Driver of the Year. Me included. Even this season, Kvyat had his fan favourite moment, a podium finish in China, standing up to Vettel's anger for a barge that didn't really exist. It was all coming up roses for Danil until that crash in Russia that led to his Toro Rosso pseudo demotion. It's a move that still kinda has me in shock. A driver swapped out mid-season. Unthinkable. I'm, clearly, I'm completely of the belief that Kvyat was screwed by a Verstappen collective that was getting real sick of Red Bull shit and wanting their new golden boy to fulfil his potential. Now while that decision has been probably somewhat vindicated by Verstappen's unbelievable start to his Red Bull career, it leaves Kvyat looking like damaged goods. Just two points in seven rounds at Toro Rosso since his return, where Carlos Sainz finally seems to be breaking out of the shadow that Mad Max left behind, kicking Kvyat from pillar to post with six points finishes in the last seven races. I think this is the beginning of the end for Danil, and through no real fault of his own either, and it's a cold reminder that Red Bull are ruthless with their driver academy. A mentality of, well if we can produce a Vettel, Ricardo, or Verstappen every five years, fuck what anyone else does in the system. And as you can see, for every great success the camp has had, there's been an equal failure that's never quite recovered. Antonio Felix da Costa, Jaime Algasuari, who no longer races, Sebastian Buemi, who's achieved more outside of F1 than in, Sebastian Borde was chewed up and spat out, and he is one of this generation's greatest drivers, and Scott Speed, whose F1 legacy is basically this. Kvyat is a tragic reminder that sometimes sports can be very, very cruel. And Red Bull are savages, a team that has near limitless resources and can brutalise people's careers in an instant. Because as Danil so eloquently put in Catalonia, in the Game of Thrones, you win or you die. And Red Bull racing is a mountain in every sense of the word.